Good evening, everyone. I appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule and coming tonight. Our goal is to give you lots of information about our dual enrollment program here at Shepherd. And we're very proud of it, and uh, we feel that it gives our students a great opportunity. And if you don't know much about it, I think you will learn much tonight. At any point in time, if you would like to stop the conversation and ask a question, please don't hesitate. Just raise your hand, and uh, if I don't see you, even speak up. And I will do my best to repeat that question, because we are going to videotape this in case you'd like to watch it again after tonight. With that, let's begin. Uh, our dual enrollment information meeting, we have several pathways for our students. And our goal is to prepare them for future success. And we have the college students. We have the skilled trades students. Some go to the military. And even some go directly to the workforce. And there's also some students that find themselves in a combination of the two. The diversity of pathways is more robust now than it has ever been. Matter of fact, there are a lot of students that can actually go directly into the workforce and find some really good jobs nowadays. And that didn't exist 10 years ago. But tonight we're gonna to focus a lot about the college options and the skilled trades options. Now under college on the left-hand side, you see that there are three different terms there. And we need to make sure that we understand those. Dual enrollment is the broad term that describes any class that a student takes that they earn college credit while they're still in high school. And that's called dual enrollment. Now within dual enrollment, we have something called the MTA, which is the Michigan Transfer Agreement. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about that on some future slides. But it consists of 30 credits that a student can earn during their four years of high school. Typically, our students don't start until their 10th grade year dual enrolling. So in their 10th, 11th, and 12th year, they will earn a total of 30 or more credits. And it's in specific subject areas. And if they achieve that, it transfers to any Michigan public college or university. And I've also uh, communicated with Michigan State and the University of Michigan, and they also accept the Michigan Transfer Agreement. So that's a pretty big deal. And each year we get about 15 to 20 students that uh, achieve the Michigan Transfer Agreement, and that's phenomenal. The lowest one on that list is early college. Now that's a subcategory of dual enrollment. It is when you decide to stay for five years of high school, but you still graduate and participate in the ceremony at, with your cohort, but you just do not get your diploma after the ceremony. You wait one more year. But during that fifth year, you are basically a full-time student at mid. And you can earn all the way up to an associate's degree or uh, I think our highest students are going to earn up to like 66 credit hours, which is over two years of college. And then at the, the completion of their fifth year, they receive both their diploma and an associate's degree or what we call a MEMCA certificate. Now, one of the questions might be is if they go that route of the fifth year, what happens if they struggle? They don't pass a class or life happens and uh, they get ill and they can't complete it. As long as they complete 15 college credits, which all of our early college students have already earned before their fifth year, they have to do 70 hours of uh, internship, job shadowing, career exploration, and they are considered a graduate and they receive what's called a MEMCA certificate. Now, I'm throwing a lot of terms at you if you haven't heard these before. So if you want me to stop or go back over anything, just raise your hand. Mr. Ross, I have a question. Yes. Can, if you take a dual enrollment class, are you automatically in early college? If you take a dual enrollment class, 
you are not necessarily in early college. However, every student who's in early college is in dual enrollment. Early college is only those students that stay for the fifth year. And I'm going to show you in a slide or two that there's an application process for getting into that. The other thing you're going to find out is the skilled trades, our students who decide to go into those, which are great careers, they can either go up to the Tech Center in Mount Pleasant or Elma, or they can even stay for the fifth year and be part of our early college program and get certification in, say, welding or heating and cooling or construction trades and many others. So when it comes to dual enrollment, and I meet with the students, and so does Mr. Huber, the other counselor, we meet individually with every student, their sophomore year, junior year, and senior year, all three. And we'll ask them, do you want to take college classes in dual enrollment? They say yes. We're going to look to see if they're ready. We're going to look at some test scores, their grades, their attendance, and make sure that they can be successful in those classes. And if they can, we will ask them what their goal is. Well, one goal might be, well, I, I want to take a class or two in college and just see what it's like so I can gain some experience. Wonderful. That's great. And we just call that dual enrollment experience. Now, some will say, hey, I'm pretty confident with this. I want to get the Michigan transfer agreement. So when I go off to Saginaw Valley or Ferris or Grand Valley, CMU, I'll have my first year of college completed. Now, please know, it is likely if you get the transfer agreement and you go off to college after your four years of high school, you may have to declare a major. Some people panic about that. I'm like, well, that's not a, a big deal. You, know, you can declare your major and get started in that. You can always change your major in college. There's a process to it, but you can change your major. And then the early college, if they tell us that, I, I inform them you have to make a decision prior to October of your junior year. Anytime after October of your junior year of high school, you, you cannot get into the early college program. That window of opportunity is passed. And there is an application process, and the administration and a team will evaluate those applications and make a determination. Typically here at Shepherd, we have about 10% or, or about 10 to 12 students who participate in early college each year. If you are looking to get the Michigan transfer degree or uh, the pathway and agreement, here is a map of how it will work. And if you look at it in the green on the left, that's your 10th grade year. In the fall, you will take a three-credit psychology class and most likely a three-credit history class. And that will be your introduction into college courses. Then in the winter-spring, you will take sociology 101, and that will take up both second try and third try. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Our first trimester ends at about Thanksgiving. They will not have a class that period until they come back from Christmas break. One week later, when the college classes start, they will start. So there's a time period where they do not have a class. And then their class will go through the end of the semester at mid, which ends before our school year is over. So just understand there is a period of time where the student will not have a class that period. And we're, we have flexibility in our, in our school. And it's a little different than what some of us were used to when we were in school. The junior year, they go on and they take COM 101, that is speech. And to me, it's really nice that our students are able to get speech out of the way while they're here in high school. They're with their friend groups. Now they don't have to take it after they go off to college. And then in the pink, they have to make a choice. They can choose one or the other, or they could do both, of a math class. Uh, this is for students that are, were on the fast track in math, and they've already done Algebra 2 as a sophomore. They can take pre-calculus in the winter-spring, 
or they can take statistics in the fall. Uh, some of our students do choose to do both of those. And then the senior year comes around, and in the fall they'll take English 111. And I don't remember if I said this, but every single class that I've mentioned so far is taught by a professor on our campus right here. The student doesn't leave our campus yet. The first class that they have to leave our campus is in the fall of their senior year, and that is Chem 105. And there's a lab component to it. And it typically runs in the morning, like from 7.30 to 8.30, 9 o'clock. And they could, if they are not necessarily a real strong math student, they could still get their math competency by taking Math 107 in the fall of their senior year. And then in the spring, they will take English 112. And then they got to take another science, and they have a choice. They can take Bio 103, which is taught right here on our campus, and there's no lab to it. Or they can challenge themselves and take a Physics 105 class. That's taught on our campus as well, but it has a lab to it. And then, I'm really proud of this. I was a math teacher for many years. Uh, math 126 is our calculus class. And we get approximately 12 students every year get through calculus here at Shepherd. And that's something I take great pride in, I think our whole school does as well. And as a math teacher, I put a nice Venn diagram up there for you. And if you look at that, you can see the big blue oval is dual enrollment. And within the dual enrollment, you have the three different categories. You have the Michigan Transfer Agreement route, you have the early college route, and you also have the skilled trades route. And you can see in the black, right in the very center, it is actually possible that you could do all three of those at the same time. You could be a dual enrolled student. You could already get your Michigan transfer agreement in your first four years. And you could say, you know what, I want to go into heating and cooling. Stay for the fifth year, get your certification in heating and cooling. And you've done all three things. You're an early college student, transfer agreement, you got a skilled trade certificate. And you're ready to go directly into the workforce and you have all the skills you need. Some considerations when you're looking at dual enrollment, and I would suggest you have some real good discussions with your son or daughter. Is the student ready academically? Most of the time our students are. Our students do pretty well. We get like a 97, 98% pass rate in college classes. Now, that's pretty good. The 2% that don't pass, I would say it almost always has nothing to do with their intellect. It has to do with their choices and their maturity. Either they took that freedom a little too far and they didn't go to class regularly, or they didn't do the homework that was needed or study. Uh, it's usually something like that, but it really has not much to do with their intellect. Uh, also, they should understand, are they ready for college level courses? Because they're going to grade it like a college course. And some students who are getting all A's, all of a sudden, oh, they're in panic mode because they're getting a A minus. Well, it's college class. It is a little bit more rigorous. The other thing is, if, they, if they're getting D's and E's, in their high school classes, and then they come to me and they say, yeah, I want to take some college courses. Well, I'm going to challenge them on that. I'll say, well, well, what makes you think that it's appropriate to take a college course when you're already struggling in high school level courses? And sometimes I get pushback on that, but I, that's a fair question to be asked. Cost. The great thing about this is the cost for you in any one of these dual enrollment classes uh, at this point in time is zero. Everything will be covered. The tuition, the fees, and the books. Most of our books are in the media center. You go there and you see if they have it. If they don't, you go purchase it and you keep the receipt. Right. If there's a lab fee for any of those science courses, is that covered too? Yes, and, and typically it's like it includes like goggles and, and a fee, but usually the fees are pretty small.
Now, when I said there's zero cost, there is one exception to that. If a student does not pass a course by law in the state of Michigan, they have to pay for it. We don't get very many students. Each term we might get three, four students that have to reimburse for their class. And by the way, we'll have 150 students new enrolling in over 250 courses. The grades can affect the transcript. Uh, most of our students count their credits in college towards college and high school. Now, a student can choose to count it towards college only. The reason they may do that is if they're going to take a really, really hard physics class and they think it might affect their GPA and it's not needed for high school graduation, yeah, maybe they count it just towards college and they challenge themselves. But they still have to achieve the credits needed to graduate high school. So if you count too many of the college classes towards college only, guess what? You may not earn enough high school credits to graduate. So you got to, they talked to me about that and I, Usually advise them. Mr. Ross, I just want to clarify one thing. So, the only time there is no charge for dual enrollment is if you take the class that day. So, if you chose mm -hmm. to take a class someplace else, there will be a cost for that class. Yeah, for example, if you took a course at CMU, which we don't very seldom do, we have a student do that, but every now and then, there might be a few hundred dollars that will come out of the parents funding to pay for the offset. The school by law will pay up to an FTE amount. Whatever the state pays per period for our student, we'll pay that full amount to cover the education for that student. Students are responsible for communication of performance with their parents. I get calls from the parents saying, well, hey, I'd like to know how Johnny's doing in his dual class. And I'll say, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're his counselor. I said, I mean, I don't know. I don't have any right to their courses. It's a college class. So what I suggest to the parent is, you demand your student open up their Moodle account and show you their grade. They can do that. And if they say they can't, you press them, because they can't. They should have access to their Moodle, and you should see their grades. And also, it is a, it's a good example for them, or opportunity for them, to learn some responsibility. Can the parent email the teacher? Oh, please, please do not, as a parent, email an instructor. It's just, it, that's an unprofessional. If you do have an issue with what's happening, talk to your son or daughter. Advise them first. Maybe they could even come talk to me and I could intervene as a school employee or have a conversation with that person. Now, if something happens, you're like, well, this isn't right. You can actually go online and fill out a complaint or a concern, and it goes up to the dean at the college, and then the dean at the college will look into it. But if, if a parent calls a professor, it's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. It's, it's, it's inappropriate. So with any of that, just communicate with your son or daughter. You can communicate with me. I can advise you. You can even do an appeal online. It'll go directly to the college. Good question. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, most books are available in the media center. Uh, others, it says at the expense of the student, but typically there wouldn't be any expense. But if there's a book that's $300 and, and the course runs over the FTE amount, there might be a cost to parents. We don't run into that very often, if at all. Another thing to consider, and, and I don't have all the answers to this, if the student knows which college they'd like to go on to down the road, they may want to call that college. Like, say, Michigan Tech. Kind of unique, kind of an engineering school. They might want to call Michigan Tech and say, hey, we're taking some dual classes at mid-Michigan. We want to make sure each one of those will transfer over to your school. Or are there specific courses you would recommend we take? That's worth it. And if you just call up their admissions office, they're, they're really helpful and they can give you some good advice. Early college opportunity. I want to say it again, it's important because we've had a lot of confusion on this over the years. Early college five-year program is not the same as dual enrollment. 
not all dual enrolled students are automatically in early college. Students participate in the graduation ceremony after their fourth year. Here's another one. Students, if they're in the early college program, are not eligible to be top 10 honors. Well, the reason for that is they're really not graduating with that goal. They participate in the ceremony, but when it comes down to formality, they're really graduating the year after with a diploma. Now, here's the next question, too. There, there exist no more scholarships for valedictorian or salutatorian. They're not out there anymore. They used to be out there. They're not. However, a student who has certain GPAs, that's where your merit-based scholarships come in. If they have a 4.0 and they got a certain SAT score, they're going to qualify on some sort of sliding scale for amount of money, depending on the college. Typically, you know, if you're you're a 3.5 or higher, you're looking at somewhere between $3,000 and $6,000 merit scholarship per year at most of the universities in our area. But they look, they are looking more and more at the GPA. Uh, they used to look a little bit more at the SAT. They always go back and forth on those. Uh, students are not eligible to participate in high school sports during the fifth year if they do early college. However, they just passed a law that took effect this year. If you are a good enough athlete, you can participate at mid. You can be on their basketball team, their bowling team, their, uh, what do you call it, shotgun? Ski. Yeah. Track. All right. I'm not sure what the official name of it is, and that's out there. And I think they also have cross country and baseball. Do they have softball? Yes. Okay, so they have softball. So, so there's quite a few sports at mid. If they uh, are good enough, they can participate during that fifth year. Do you know if the start their college eligibility automatically? I believe it does. Yep, that's a great question, too. We have a ton of information that's available on our website, the onwardshepherd.weebly.com. I would encourage you to go to that site and read through the information. And you must apply the fall of your junior year. After that October, it's done. You, you can't get into it. We've had students that, for some reason or another, they thought they were in early college. And we're like, well, what made you think you were in early college? Well, I was dual enrolling. Well, you know, there's an application to be had for that. And we keep logs of it. It's on our, it's online. So if somebody said, well, I filled it out, we can pull it up and yes or no. We can see if you did. We can even tell you the time of day you did it. All right. With that information, uh, I also want to add to that with the skilled trades opportunity, because if you want to go into welding or whatever, HVAC, electrical, there are opportunities at mid. And here's a link. If you go to mid site, and this is also available on our website, you can go there. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. When you go there, there's a link for skilled trades. And when you click that, there's all kinds of different programs. And if you click on any one of those programs, it'll go into extensive detail as to what's offered. Uh, there's automation and robotics, automotive and diesel, uh, heating, refrigeration, air conditioning. Uh, we have a graduate from last year going into that now. Uh, Computer-aided drafting, my, my oldest son is actually in that program right now. He loves it. And they're looking at uh, uh, apprenticeship opportunities, and they're all over the place. And the pay is pretty good. So he's going into computer-aided drafting. And they said the teachers there are phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, geothermal, uh, machine tool, manufacturing, management, plastics. Welding, and you know, then there's other classes that are a little different, but those are certifications of commercial drivers and uh, drone photography. There's a lot of opportunities there. Any questions?
questions on the skilled trades. Well, here's the story. We had a, a young man who did the early college program, and then afterwards, he, uh, he moved out to California, and he's going to be an underwater welder. And he's going to make more than all of us combined. <laughs> and he makes big money. But it sounds a little dangerous, but I think when you're trained, you know what you're doing. So great, great technical careers out there. And the jobs are all over the place. All I keep hearing from all the manufacturing places I go to is they can't find enough people, but the bigger challenge is they can't find those that pass a drug test and show up daily. That's what they tell me directly. And it's not just one, it's every employer says the same thing. Okay, with that, what questions do you have? Okay, to sign up for dual enrollment, yeah, that's a great question, how could I pass that? Uh, Mr. Huber and I will go into classrooms, we will give a, a general overview of the options with scheduling, and we'll show them on our website where they can go and see a class list of uh, courses and, and their options. And then they need to go into what's called Zello. Zello is a program, there's a link on our website, and they go and they choose their classes for next year. And then we, in some come March, April, we lock it in, we pull those classes out, and we dump them into power school, and those become their registration classes that they're trying to get into for the next year. If a student puts a dual enrollment class in their Zillow, I will call them down individually. I'll say, come on down. Hey, it appears you're interested in dual enrolling. Tell me what you're trying to do with it. What class did you sign up for? Are we good to go? And I have a discussion with them. I would encourage you as a parent to ask to see your child's Zello sign up. But they haven't done it yet. It's going to be another two or three weeks. But you know, two or three weeks down the road, just ask, can I see what you signed up for for next year? Or if you want, if you call me up or Mr. Huber up, we'll, we'll pull up their Zello account and we can tell you what they've signed up for if you'd like to discuss it on the phone. So that's how you sign up for dual enrollment. You have to also complete a Google form that's available on our website. Let me see if I can pull that up. This is our website. It's the Onward Shepherd dot Weebly site, and I hope you're familiar with it. If not, I encourage you to check it out. You can see the Zello account on the right-hand side there. If you just click that button, you'll be able to log in. But the other button you'll need to know is dual enrollment in that middle column. And that'll take you to this page, which gives you information about dual enrollment. And if you want to dual enroll, you click the link. And it tells you, here's step one, step two, step three of the process. And all you do is click the Google Forms, complete it, and you're good to go. So we had parents ask, how did my child sign up for it if I didn't say they could? Well, that means they forged your name. Yes. By typing your name in, we've checked onto the legalities of it, it's as good as a signature. We say by typing your name here, you are testing, agreeing that you are the one completing this form. So if they forge it, that's just like them forging your signature on a note. Not that they would ever do that. Uh, the other thing is they would have to put dual enrollment in their schedule in Zello. So they chose it. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't put it in there for them. They choose it and we pull from Zello. Uh, also, you can get to this website if you're not familiar with it on our high school page. If you just hit counseling office, it'll take you right to this. Okay? Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, so the question is, are the transfers all or nothing, or is it whatever they can get? That's a great question. If they get the transfer agreement, all public colleges and universities, by law in Michigan, are supposed to accept all 30 of the credits. Now, let's say they take two classes. They take psychology and speech. 
depending on the college they go to, they will accept that individual class. Now, if they go to the University of Michigan, they may be a little bit more particular and say, mm. no, that can happen. Most, like CMU, CMU will take almost every course that's taught at mid to some capacity, if they offer a class similar to it. What I recommend is, let's say you're going to Elma College. Well, that's not a public college, that's private. So you may want to call them ahead of time and say, hey, I'm taking these five dual classes at mid. Will they transfer to your college? Now, let's say the college says, no, we won't take them. I would still recommend that your student take that class. Now, why would I do that? If it doesn't transfer, why should you still take a college level course? Is it gonna prepare you for that rigor that's gonna come down the road? Yeah, better than taking a class that's not college level. So even if it doesn't transfer, there's still benefit to it. What other questions do you have? What if they start the fifth year high school program and they decide it's not going to be Yeah, there is some flexibility. There's an expectation that if you sign up for that, there's a commitment, you're going to do this. Because if we get too many that don't, we get docked as a school. Anybody who drops out of it, we get, it's like they've never graduated. Even though they get the diploma, we can't count it as a school. So we get hit for that. But a student signs up for it, and we know life happens. Big things happen, and, and you didn't see it. We don't want to do it anymore. They have to fill out a, a withdrawal application from the program. We as administrative staff will look at it, and if it seems reasonable, we will pull that student out and make some accommodations. So there is some flexibility. But we do want students to you know, really put some thought into it. One of the big reasons we might pull a student out, let's say, let's say they're a wrestler, and all of a sudden their junior year, they signed up for early college, but they have a great season, and Iowa offers them a full ride scholarship to wrestle. Well, we're not gonna tell them, nope, you're not doing that, you're committed to mid next year. We're gonna allow them to do something like that. We've also had some medical stuff. Where yeah. Really I mean, it has to be, We have another student that was going to move like oh, yeah. a thousand miles away. Well, yeah, that sounds like a smart thing to do, is not do the program. So, good questions. Really good. Anything else you can think of? How many of you are, are in ninth grade now going to be in 10th grade? Oh, excellent. So, you would take those classes that uh, Mr. Ross talked about, the psychology and the sociology, and right? History 101. Yes, possibly History 101 if you can fit it in. Um, those, are, those are good just introductory classes. But I want to remind you, you do not take attendance because we're not in the room. Uh, so you won't see that on public school. Um, and a reminder about the grades. So it's really going to be important that you have some good conversations about what your expectations are of your child when they don't have class and where you want them to be and how you want them to spend their time. I did not explain this at all, and I apologize. Uh, a typical three-credit class like our psychology will only meet Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. That means Tuesday and Thursday, third period, second period rolls around, they do not have a class. So the expectation for them is that they're either in the commons, studying, or they're in the media center, studying. Uh, as you know, a college class, they're basically going to lecture and provide information almost the whole time, and then you've got to practice and study and read the material on your day off. So there's freedom there. We're not going to monitor that for the student, but they need to take advantage of that time. And sometimes that can be a struggle for a young person who's not used to having that much freedom. And we do get academic alerts if the teacher puts it in. So if the teacher says they're worried about the student, we will get notified and we will let you know, but that teacher has to put in the academic alert for us to be notified, otherwise we are not notified. 
Oh, another thing, I didn't say this as well. For the Michigan Transfer Agreement, a student has to earn a C or better to get it. Matter of fact, most colleges, if they're going to accept a course from another college to themselves, it has to be a C or better. Now, if you get a D, you won't be able to transfer that college credit. It'll still be good at mid, and you will not have to pay for it. The only time you have to pay for a class is if you get an E. You do not get a credit in a class. Another thing to consider for this is <clears throat> they expect you to do college level reading and writing in these courses. So you're going to read a little bit more volume than you would in a high school class. The writing expectation is going to be a little bit more intense. But our students do well in it. So please don't shy away from it as students because you can do it. But you got to keep pushing yourself and get a little better. Okay, well, let's stop right there. If, uh, if you'd like, you can go to our website. We will post this video again so you can listen to it again if you need to. If you have any questions after you leave, please call me at the school and just ask to speak to Brian Ross, and I will do my best to answer the questions you have. So thank you very much for coming out. I appreciate it. You're dismissed. <laughs>